One. So I had the misfortune of dealing with an overly entitled trio at my job. The resort I am working at is an independent establishment in Southeast Asia with lovely, supportive managers and co-workers. As with all independent hotels, we got hit pretty hard by the pandemic and two years of lockdown, so we have been eager to restart the business and begin recovering. Since our place is rather short-staffed, I am working in both online reservation and front desk. Yesterday, we welcomed one particular family that caused so much distress for everyone working here. At check-in, they brought in a mountain of luggage, boasting to us that they've been traveling around the world. Okay, so that's nice. I hoped they were understanding as seasoned travelers. We brought them to our three-bedroom family condominium on the top floor, with a direct view to the ocean, and it took four of us to bring their luggage up. Thirty minutes later, they started complaining. Since the other receptionists were new, I didn't want them to get stressed out by the guests, so I went up to the room alone. I was greeted by the grandmother of the group. The grandmother started berating me to move the coffee table in the room out of her sight so her grandchild wouldn't get hit in the head while running in the room. Okay, reasonable, we can do that. Then she moved on to the outdoor balcony facing the ocean and asked why there's dirt there. Well, it's outdoor, where there's wind and sand. I can't work miracles. After that, she demanded that all her staff clean up the resort's garden so that she can enjoy the view. She's the only one hating on her landscaping since reopening. At this point, I was rather woozy from her rapid-fire nagging and she started demanding that the hotel provide groceries, dishware, free laundry for her and her family, which were nowhere mentioned in room amenities listed online. Returning to the front desk, my co-workers were concerned when I looked distraught, but I told them it's fine. It would sort itself out with their travel agency. Grandma came down with her grandson. Oh dear. Knowing how terrified they were, I told my co-workers to stay put while I allow Grandma to our swimming pools. Her grandson rushed to our pool and he loved it. Great kid and great swimmer too for three years old. Not so much for his grandma. She started screaming for us to bring her towels. While the kids happily enjoying the pool, Grandma's hurling abuse and swears at me. The usual threats for a refund, etc. The other members of her family were visibly uncomfortable by her behavior, but ultimately caved in and joined her in hurling abuse at us. Not two hours after checking these people in, I was already fuming and deciding to just ask the travel agency to relocate them to not traumatize the staff, as we hadn't charged the agency's account. Too late, Grandma's family already started rampaging in the restaurant. After eating three or four dishes, they insulted our chefs and refused to pay for the bills, citing they're unsatisfactory with cooking and calling it disgusting. They ate everything. Yes, that's it. These people had to go. Despite their reservation being non-refundable, I wasn't willing to let them abuse us any further. I had to beg the travel agency to relocate these people as soon as possible. During the process, the grandma's son called me reservation, through my co-worker's cell phone, not knowing I was also the receptionist receiving their abuses. Thankfully, I was in the office at that point. He started listing a bunch of grocery items, while demanding us to fetch the bills, along with giving their whole family three free meals daily. Nope, nope. He ended the call by slamming my co-worker's phone on the desk. Needless to say, the owner of the phone was baffled. After working, begging, with the travel agency, I agreed to waive 50% of their first night to cover the mental trauma they inflicted upon the staff. I was praying to multiple forces to get these people out of the hotel ASAP. The only silver lining of the day was that we had a wonderful surprise birthday party for another staying family with lots of laughs and videos. I snuck in a wish during their birthday for more lovely people like them instead of grandma's family. It's now four hours before checkout, and they still refuse to pay for the restaurant bills. I am convincing the manager that the room charge should cover it, but 
She is very angry after hearing the staff got abused. Talking her down so that she wouldn't call the cops on them, upsetting the poor kids. The travel agent of the family was horrified after hearing about how they treated us and relocated them far outside the city. Everyone at the front desk was cheering as Grandma and her family were leaving for the resort. She vowed to write a one-star review and tell her Facebook friends. They also informed us they had a parcel delivered to the resort and demanded we reroute them to their new place. That and they left the kids' medicine in the room and wanted us to deliver those too. Great parents. I guess Grandma was too busy thinking, my poor grandson, she forgot about them. We're now getting back to work to prepare for 200 guests coming next week. If you ever plan to visit Da Nang, Vietnam, hit me up. As long as I'm working here, you all would be always our special guests. 2. Last week of January, 2018. Absolutely frigid. That was the winter I learned that Celsius and Fahrenheit intersected at minus 40, the hard way. It was a bad week for me all around. My grandpa had just died, and I hadn't yet started antidepressants, so you can imagine where my mental state was. I'm the full-time night audit, but I work weekends because it's easier to keep alts when they don't have to work weekends. It's the last Sunday of the month. It's a balmy minus 20 outside. Minus 28 for all you Celsius fans. I'm in the back folding laundry and watching videos on my phone. I get a call on the house phone. Noise complaint. How about some kids running around the third floor? I go up and find a man and his partner arguing. The man is incredibly drunk. It's their kids running up and down the hall making noise. I ask them to rein their kids in and head back downstairs. Nothing out of the ordinary so far, but we all know what's going to come next. About an hour later, I get a call saying that there's flooding on the third floor. I was perplexed by this, but figured that someone had clogged their toilet. So I go up with a plunger. I get up there and find the hallway quickly turning into a lazy river as water gushes from the room that the noise complaint had come from. The family had booked it from the room and left the door wide open. The drunk bastard had ripped the fire sprinkler from the wall in anger and the pipes were already under a lot of pressure from the intense cold. Water was gushing like a geyser from the hole. I had to go downstairs and call the fire department. People were panicking. I don't think I was in the most calm mindset either. My attention was divided a hundred ways. People complaining, not wanting to go outside in the cold, despite water now pouring from light fixtures, like some kind of deranged water park. I saw water was starting to drip on the computer monitors, so I grabbed trash bags and covered them up. I saw the water was starting to pool on the floor, so I grabbed laundry carts to put under the bigger leaks and try to mop up the water. I tried hunting for the water shutoff valve, but I'm not maintenance, so I had no idea where it was. And so many people wanting my attention. It was just me there, after all. A certain travel agency monopoly we all hate was calling me and asking if I'd refund their clients. Lady, the situation is so much more claimant than you realize. I cried in exasperation. That is my most vivid memory, for some reason. I guess because it's the first time I'd ever used claimant in a casual conversation. Honestly, I kind of wanted to say we were going to charge double to anyone who was calling them now of all times. But I said it'd be up to the manager. Finally, the fire department, manager and AGM, who was the real manager and everything but name, came and helped me get a better handle of the situation, shutting down the sprinkler system and cleaning up the water, at that point, ceiling tiles were falling from the ceiling and almost hitting people, despite me asking them multiple times to go outside. I paused for five minutes to have dinner, just a microwave mac and cheese dinner, and the head housekeeper who arrived by then got incensed and asked me why I wasn't helping work. Thankfully, the AGM backed me up and told me to finish my meal. Breakfast that day was some donuts from the local chain bakery, I went home exhausted and sobbing. It was one of the most miserable experiences of my life. 
Even recalling it now makes me tense and angry. The idiot responsible did eventually turn back up, spinning some BS story about how they had left a shirt hanging on the fire sprinkler. But the insurance company basically told us that if we wanted coverage for the damages, we couldn't press charges and have to label it as an accident. I surprisingly came off looking a lot better than I felt. Despite my internal panic, people apparently thought I kept my cool. They said I kept back the Mississippi with a mop. I got a decent-ish raise, and the closest thing to tenure you can get in the hotel field. The phrase, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, gets tossed around a lot, but yeah. That describes us pretty well. Between the water and freezing air, it felt like I was on the Titanic. I still work there too, despite all that. I guess it's hard to have a night worse than that. 3. This happened earlier tonight to me and my coworker. This is basically a rant. This older man has been here for a few days already with his wife. They are set to check out on Friday. My interactions with him have been relatively okay, except whenever he came to the desk, he would knock on the counter for my attention. Every time. And we all hate that. Tonight he calls to tell me that his toilet is overflowed. I let him know I will send my co-worker, engineer, up there with towels. Five minutes pass and he is at the desk and knocking on the counter. He tells me that no one has showed up yet and I explain my co-worker is possibly working on another task. And I will radio him again. This time my co-worker responds and is on the way to the desk. The old man is already being degrading about my co-worker. Before they have even shown up to the desk. When the co-worker shows up, I ask if he can look at the toilet and take some towels up to clean the water. He has just recently switched from being a fellow front desk person to being part of the engineering department. So still learning some things. My co-worker says he doesn't know enough about plumbing yet to help with the toilet and we should call the engineer manager. The old man doesn't like that answer one bit and starts talking to my co-worker in front of me in a demeaning manner, over enunciating every word. The man gets up in my co-worker's face while speaking like this. I am talking like less than six inches from their face. My co-worker was not having it and told the old man to get out of his face. The old man starts to walk away back to his room while calling my co-worker a mofo. Co-worker then walks off to call the engineer manager about this, and I try to cool my rising anger, since I still have guests to face. While the old man calls the desk again, demanding towels still and that the child be fired. I'm already not going to listen to this guest further insult my co-worker, so I tell him, that he should not have gotten in my co-worker's face like he did. He tries to say that he was two feet from my co-worker, and that I saw it. No, sir, I saw you get up in my co-worker's face and call him a motherfucker. I still get demands that the kids be sent home and someone competent brings his towels. I'm trying to still be kind and tell him I'll bring him towels after I'm done helping a guest that is in front of me checking in. Not even three minutes after the call, I just finished checking the new guest in and his wife comes to the desk for the towels. I tell her I was just about to grab the towels and bring them up. As I walk out from behind the desk, I'm scared by the old man basically hiding in her cart cubby next to the desk, with his arms crossed and a kind of smile on his face. Keeping myself controlled, I walk past him to the closet. A few minutes pass and the engineer manager calls me to hear about this from me as well as getting a call from my co-worker. He tells me he's on his way, and I hope this will be the end of it. Nope. Old guy comes back down, carrying the sopping wet towels, asking where the numbskull is, so he can drop this in front of his office, since he doesn't know how to do his job. I say I will take the towels, and that a manager is on the way. From where? South America? Africa? I just take the towels while imagining beating him with a chair. I will put up with being talked to like that, but I will not put up with someone talking like that to my co-workers. Also, the guy didn't even answer his door when the engineer came by to his room. 
I will ask that man to leave if he continues this behavior tomorrow, regardless if I have the authority to or not. Four. Hello. I work night shift, 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Well, not anymore, because my hours were cut to 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Anyway, our hotel is about 100 rooms, and we have a local construction company that has been staying with us for a few months now. Long before I got here in August. Last week, two construction guys got into a fight behind the hotel, in the suite's parking lot, and one of them fired a gun. I literally did a perimeter check 40 minutes before shots were fired. Thing is, I didn't even hear the gun go off. The cops called me around 2.15 a.m. asking if we had security cameras in the back parking lot, which I replied, no. Can I ask why you need footage, though? Sure. Two individuals were arrested about an hour ago for firing a firearm. Okay. I am pretty sure there is not security cameras back there, but I will ask my GM just in case. Give us a call back if there is footage. Thinking in the back of my head about my GM being in Las Vegas for training... Oh well, I'll just type up a report of everything that happened in text her. Fast forward to this week, she never replies or addresses it with any of the front desk people, including me. Whatever, I guess shots being fired ain't important. Oh, I should mention the other night auditor found ten shell casings in the back, so not sus at all. One of the construction workers was still in jail, but his baby mama, kids and family was still in the room making noise and getting drunk. I gave them a warning, asked for the construction guy who's supposed to be in the room, and baby mama replies, Oh, he's sleeping. Okay, just keep it down. First lie, because he is in jail, I didn't know at the time, but something wasn't sitting right with me. So I looked him up on the jail app, and there he is, arrested at 1.30ish the previous day. I call my GM, and of course you don't answer. Shit always goes down when the GM ain't here. I call my co-worker, who always tells me to call her if the guests are being rude or need to be kicked, which has never happened before to me, until that day. I call her and she sends her husband, who is wearing a wife beater and has face tattoos. Great, now I have a bodyguard and I have a spiky taser light. What could go wrong? By now, the guests below them have made a noise complaint and tell them I am taking care of it by kicking them out and they will receive a discount. No more issues from them. Anyway, we kick them out, and she smells like strayed bottles. <laughs> and she starts saying they have nowhere to go. Which leaves me thinking, then why keep being loud as shit? Anyway, they leave. My co-worker's husband hops the fence back home. And I write a report because I don't know what to do when you kick someone out, because this is my first time. I call the boss for the construction company. He says he'll deal with them when he's out of jail and lets us know to put him on DNR. Some drama for my usually boring shifts, but let me just list some security issues. The suite's parking lot entrance opens to anyone without a keycard. Manager said it won't ever be fixed. You're wondering why. Just too expensive. The front desk entrance is a lie. The keycard also doesn't work. The front door locks, but if you were to pull on it hard, you could open it. Housekeeping keeps leaving the housekeeping doors open. Most of the locks are fake. If you pull the door, it will open. We only have two cameras, one for the safe and one facing the computer and drawer. This is why I have my spiky taser light. 5. Circa 2016, we hire this Jordanian girl, who at first seemed very nice, handled guests well, foreshadowing, and picked up the SOP pretty quickly. I'll admit I had a bit of a crush on her at first. After a while, it became fairly obvious that she was a bit of a narcissist. She started having trouble coming in for first shift on time, which, as the auditor, annoyed the shit out of me. Then she started expecting me or the early houseman to have coffee prepared for her, the way she liked it by the time she walked in. Major red flag right there. She soon decided that brown-nosing the higher-ups was the way to go, and it paid off for her greatly. She was soon promoted to front office manager. About a month into her being front office manager, she not only started demanding her prepared coffee, 
but she said that if she wasn't here by 7.30 for her shift, someone needed to go over to her house to wake her up. Hell no. There was no way I was playing this game with her. She was moved over to second shift when her tardiness became too much of an issue to ignore, but management spun it as she was needed to handle more guest complaints that would come in during the evenings. While she was on the desk, she would have her AirPods in, and always be on a video call with her boyfriend over in Jordan. She would hide the AirPods under her hair, but her calls would last for ten hours or more, and often he would be asleep on the phone. She admitted that she was doing that, as well as tracking his phone to make sure she knew where he was at all times. To make matters worse for him, while he'd be asleep, I would come on duty at 11pm, and she would promptly say, I have to go to a room to help with their TV, and then flounce off and be gone until 12.30 or 1am, and come back with her hair and clothes completely disheveled. Really no subtlety at all. We tried reporting her for fraternizing with guests a few times, but since she was so far up management's collective colons, they did nothing. But then she decided to fuck off to Jordan with no notice and didn't return to the USA for four months. She was supposedly fired during this time, but as soon as she came back, management rehired her. They put her back as FDA for a time. She realized she needed to get back to brown nosing in order to get back into good standing with management, so she made a big show of asking to be cross-trained in all departments. One night she was training with me, and in between trysts with guests she revealed how much of a nut job she was by telling me unprompted about how whenever someone yells at her and she gets mad she gets pretty violent and will throw objects and how she's torn up her parents' house on numerous occasions because of arguments with her mom. I sent her home as soon as I could because she was way more than I wanted to deal with, but she soon became openly antagonistic to me. Soon enough, the brown nosing paid off again and she was promoted to supervisor. She soon went on the warpath, not just towards me, but towards most of the desk, and also the lead salesperson at the time, she and the salesperson would have actual screaming matches at each other on almost a daily basis. It got really petty too, as we would later learn. She would also try to write up a lot of people and have disciplinary meetings with them, by herself, even though she had no authority to do so. She tried that a number of times with me, even presenting me with physical write-ups on notebook paper, which I flat out told her she couldn't write me up, and there was no way I was going to cooperate with her power trip. Eventually, a new front office manager was brought in, and the supervisor stuck it out for another month before she decided it was too much of an insult to her that she didn't get her old position back, and once again, disappeared off to Jordan with no notice. This was about two months before the pandemic hit and lockdowns began. Since then, we found her journal where she would document every perceived transgression every member of staff made against her, including documenting the times of the salesperson's arrival and departure from work, trying to get him fired. I've heard that she ended up marrying the dude she was always keeping tabs on. Even though she was banging other guys, I still occasionally get guests to come in who ask if she still works here, to which I say no, she was let go, and they lament that they couldn't get her to come up and get help with their TVs from her. Hey everybody, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Kowahu, episode 101. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Before you go, please hit the like button, hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so, and share the video around with friends and family. Alright, I think we have a birthday show now to do today, actually. Uh, this is the first, yeah, this is the first, we have one to do today. And today's birthday shoutout goes to... Anna, uh, better known uh, in the YouTube comments and live streams as a elephant. And Anna is 41 this year. Oh, you're the same age as me, Anna. I hope you have a great birthday. And uh, let's see. Uh, uh, you made a Hitchhiker's reference in your message, which I do respect. That earns a... That earns a... That, that impresses me. What can I say? I like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. 
Well, as the new rules that I made up a few weeks back are, you're not you're allowed to celebrate your birthday for the entire month of December, maybe even a little bit into January, you know, because uh, January is a celebrated time anyway. Uh, at least the start of it is. So make sure you're doing lots of fun things, as well as having lots of good times at Christmas, if that's something you care to partake in. But before we move on, I'd like to sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Anna. Happy birthday to you. <sighs> Lovely. All right, let's see. Let's move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Television shows that you loved in the early years, but you lost interest in in the later. So you've never finished it, but you do still find yourself re-watching the early seasons. I can give you examples. I love the show Supernatural. Just in general, I love the show Supernatural. I've still got about a season and a half to finish it. And even though I have, and I have accessed them through, I think, Amazon Prime, I... Still occasionally go back to like season one, two, and whatever, and do a rewatch through there, even though I've still not finished the rest of the show. The same with uh, the same with uh, Bones is another example of that. I enjoy the early seasons of Bones way more than the later ones. And although I'd made uh, a few was it this year, last year, it was a few months back, I'll occasionally make an attempt to start at the beginning and then go through. And I got further this time. I think, again, I've probably got maybe like two seasons or a season and a half of Bones to finish it, uh, which was further than I got last time. I think I ended up with two, two and a half seasons. And there's a few others as well. But let me know what some of yours are. Those ones that you just you think they're so good in the earlier seasons. There's a certain charm when they're new that you know maybe they shines off a little bit as things go on. I look forward to seeing what your answers are in the comment below. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time. Thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.